the viewer discretion this person ends up urinating on the floor in my camera shot and then I guess massaging himself in a way where anyone looking at it would know that this is being deliberately done so a person can see it so I wanted to share this and just input it in this video just to let you guys know this is what these people do they will um Try to make you feel uncomfortable in your own home. Not all of us go through the same thing, but just think about things to make an individual uncomfortable. They do it. So I looked up the law regarding urination and it, it is an offense, so it is illegal. So to know your laws is the best thing. So I just wanted to incorporate that. Um, just to let you guys know, these people really do want to get a reaction out of you. They'll do things to try to trigger you. They um, want you to watch them. They want you to see them. They want you to feel uncomfortable in your own home. That's the whole goal. I put a blur, a blur up because his hand was in his pants too long. And I don't want to make anyone else feel uncomfortable. I just wanted to show you guys this is the kind of crap that these wicked demons do. person that you see I slowed it down because the, I had turned off my camera when I was coming from the mailbox I was vlogging and the person that's on the right came out I didn't really see but he was by the bushes right there just to watch and I turned on the camera and just so you guys can see this is what I'm talking about I just went to the mailbox um, just a, just another day uh, just another day just another day but I wanted to incorporate that so you can see it I, how this happens a lot of people don't know what gang stalking is but it's definitely people watching stalking tracking harassing an individual to break them if you look at gang stalking strictly in the physical you continuously be going around in a circle there's so many different aspects there's so many different tactics you have to look at it in every angle and in every way so you have to pinpoint in which way it's happening to you nothing random about a person being gang stalked either they want you to believe that it's random there's nothing random about that some people have been being targeted since they were children and that's because of their purpose so whoever you're going to make an impact on whatever you're going to become that's why you've been being gang stalked people that are gang stalking individuals are working out of the spirit of the devil which is to kill steal and destroy so you have to look at it in that way there's a group of people that are demonic the the highest to the lowest they want to kill they want to steal and they want to destroy but why you there's an individual that said that the reason a people are being targeted is because they're the waste of society i don't know how true that is um, some aspect of it they do want to get rid of individuals because of your purpose but also you have to understand what people actually think is um, unfortunate situations has to do with gang stalk. Whether they want to take your children, put them in a system, abduct your children to do 
heinous things to them. Sex traffic, you or your child. Kidnap people, incarcerate people, commit people. This all ties into gang stalking. And people just look at it like something random on the news when that has to do with the reason, one of the reasons why they may be gang stalking you. You have to figure out in what way that they're gang stalking you because they're gang stalking you for a reason. So yes, it's a very organized system here. When I knew something was going on with the way these people were just huddling together, just watching my every move. It didn't make sense, but I knew something was going on and it happened at my, my jobs, right? So the last job that I was at this is in New York. I was home for maybe a month and a half and that's when I started to change my life, you can say. So that's another way something big changed in your life. So you start to cut people out. You started to cut people off. You've changed numbers. You changed something changed. So if this is not towards you since a child, something changed in your life and this started. If the enemy is using certain people, whether it be family members, a relationship, um, coworkers, neighbors, if he's been using these people, but then you started to close these doors so there's no opening for the enemy to afflict you through these people, that's when you'll see it rev up in, in, different, pla in different areas of your life. So if you stop working in places it's, it'll start happening where you live. So they say, oh, about whistleblowing. Yeah, but sometimes they can see ahead of time where you didn't, you didn't whistleblow yet, but you will in the future. You'll be gang stalked because they're trying to stop you from whatever it is. So this is what you have to understand. If you're looking at it in this aspect, then you can get ahead of what they're trying to do, what they're trying to stop, what they're trying to block, and then you'll understand it better. But still in all, even with them trying to stop you, from your purpose, stop you from pro progressing or whatever. This is, this is still something that they want you for. This is still something that they want you for. So this is the thing. There's people that's demonic, high up or low down. They're demonic entities working through these people or they're just possessed people, entities. So then you just have to understand these people are evil. They're wicked. They're sinister. And sometimes they just want to murder. Yeah. Sometimes they just want to um, do things of that nature to certain individuals. Yes. But this is why you have to put strategically put things in place when you know you're being gang stopped. Then you'd be able to observe them if that makes sense. So then when it started happening at the location I was at for 10 years, I put up the camera. This is when I put up cameras because I needed to understand what was going on. Um, because I felt like I was in danger and I never felt like that before, you know, kicking my door, um, following me outside, following me from room to room. It starts to weigh on your psyche a little bit where it's just like, what's going on? Like, what's wrong with these people? Because that's to me is not normal behavior. I don't know if you guys know what a shapeshifter is, but I'm gonna show you guys. There was one girl that was given a prophetic word, a dream interpretation on YouTube, and I was led to click on her channel sometimes we're living next to shapeshifters skinwalkers or demon possessed people people uh, some people don't want to look at gang stalking through a spiritual lens they want to keep it physical but like i always say you can't this is why we need to know how to cover all our bases physically and spiritually and the other girl is a girl that was on a a show, like a dating show. I don't even watch the show. The only one I know that did this was Kendra. I think I was taking notes one day and this just randomly came on and I was watching a little bit and then I was able to see her eyes shift. When you have eyes to see these demonically possessed people or these hybrids, you're gonna be watched. They're watched for different reasons and it could actually start off as a child because of your calling, because of who you are. People talk about this God gene and you know these hospitals are demonic. They take your blood, they can test it. So we don't know everything, you know what I mean? And then you'll be tracked and followed as a child from demonically possessed people. They feed off of your, you could say energy when you give it to them, but then also they can see you as literal food and want to devour you. They want to eat you. It is sinister. The situation is sinister. Gang stalking is sinister. And this is why we get fought a lot physically and spiritually when we talk about it, especially when we're able to reveal what's really going on on another level. So it says here, shapeshifter, one that seems able to change form or identity at will. But when they change, it's like they're, they're not aware of them changing if that makes sense so a skinwalker i believe is when you can automatically get possessed at any time any 
given time. This is why they do what they do. This is not human behavior. And I called it years ago. They're not sleeping. They're not eating. They're not, um, you don't hear them cooking. You don't hear them chatting. You don't hear them doing anything besides stalking you from room to room. And it's like they, it, it's like they're animals. And I've always said that. I say they're like rabbit dogs. And then here it says, especially in fantasy or fiction or mythology, a person or being with the ability to change their physical form. So of course, a lot of these things that are fact, they try to play it off as fiction or mythology. So when it's presented, you won't believe it. These things have been, sh been shown to us in the movies since the beginning. This is why the Lord doesn't want us to react carnal because then we'll be stepping out of bounds and we don't know what will happen if we do so. You know what I mean? So this is why you have to stay close to the Lord and you have to let the Lord guide your steps because then you're going to get stronger than them. But if you stay at the same level that this started, it's going to break you. And this is why a lot of people would commit suicide because they do not cleave to the Lord and they feel like they're all alone and they're not. There's so many of us, but the thing is they don't know how to, it just seems like the machine is bigger than them. And even if it's bigger than us, the machine isn't bigger than the Lord, if that makes sense. A lot of people call empaths, prophetic people empaths. If you're like this, you're able to sense these things. You're able to avoid these people. And this is what they don't like because you have an ability as well. You just don't know it's an ability. And this is why you feel like you're being hunted because you, you, pretty much are, but it's just more on a higher level, if that makes sense. So I started to look for a new place. I got a new place. Then it happened at a, the next place um, with these people next to, to me. And it's just like one above me, one next to me. And this is when you have to really stay close to the Lord in that way. The thing is we, and this is why when the people, when we talk about like where certain people have the Lord and people don't have the Lord that's being gang stalk, you can see the difference. Like we're suiting up with the whole armor of God. We're pleading the precious blood of the Lord over us, mind, body, spirit, and soul, um, because it'll weigh on your mind. And then you'll end up, this is why people feel like there's no way out and they end up taking their lives. We know that if we take our life, we won't be with the Lord. You know what I mean? So it's like when you have no defenses up, that's when they'll win. The stronger you are spiritually, the more stronger you will be physically. So then when I looked up PTSD and then I noticed that I was having those symptoms, I knew something was going on. Like something really tried to break me down with the tactics that they were doing. I didn't know why, because nothing, to me, nothing happened, nothing changed, you know? But it changed, it changed. The enemy wasn't able to affect me through the people um, so some people have Freemasons in their family, witches and warlocks in their family. So sometimes you are, a person is a human sacrifice, whether they're sacrificing you on an altar regarding your career, your money, your love life, or a human sacrifice for blood. So if that's the case, then you will be followed and targeted from place to place because you already been given up as a sacrifice. And this is what you have to understand. Sometimes your family have given you up and they're going to follow you. They're going to stalk you. So it's, Freemasons in people's family, witches and warlocks in people's family, murderers in their family. And this is why this is happening. When you start cutting family out, relationships and things of that nature. So sometimes there's a group of people that they're enlisting to do this, to stalk you, to follow you, to harass you of things of that nature. But you don't know it's them behind it. This is why you have to build yourself spiritually. And you will find out a lot, you know, um, the closer you get to the Lord, because he's going to reveal these things to you. So after that was... That lease was up. I moved to Florida and the same thing happened. The same exact thing happened. I was on the top floor though. The person next to me followed me from room to room, banging, same exact thing. My, my stuff didn't even come from New York yet and the same thing was happening. And I'm just like, what is going on? And that's when I talk about curses following people. So if people have been dedicated as a child then that evil entity can follow you from place to place. So if that evil entity is following you from place to place, it will cause everything around you to go left, you can say. And then and then people, then inhabiting people that's open to it to come against you, start banging, you know what I'm saying? So you don't know if it's actually an entity inhabiting these people or it's a group of people. You could say Freemasons, witches, warlocks, demonic people that you've come in contact with that enlisted these people. So it could be a group of people already set for an individual 
or it can be random people that's being influenced by demonic forces or demonically possessed people coming at you. So it's different ways, different angles, but still in all, the person is the target. So the person that is the target needs to do the most homework to get ahead of this thing because the system has been going on before the beginning of time. You have to do as much research and put as much things in place to cover all your bases, to get ahead of it. Then one morning my mat was missing. So then my mat was missing from the front of the door. And then I went outside one day, I think it was to the mailbox, came back and my mat was neatly placed, but my mat was missing for like a week. So um, that's before I put the camera up there. So my mat was there, it freaked me out. I had to call maintenance to get the mat. So then I installed cameras the next day and then the banging was, it stopped when the, the guy was there installing the camera. So not only was that person into it, it was somebody else I could see him installing the camera. So it was a like, I'm in a different state at this point. So this was happening. These are, again, these people were um, already there. So it's not like people moved in to that place. That person was already there. And the person that lived downstairs, I was going out one day and then um, I came, he followed me out three, on the third time he followed me out. Cause it could be coincidence that people are leaving at the same time. So he followed me out a third time and then I just doubled back. I didn't go where I was going. I doubled back and then he was like kind of startled and I'm like, and he said, hi, I was like, hi. And I just went in and right there, I knew that that person was following me. And, but I'm just like, what is going on? Still didn't know what was going on, but the same tactics, but these are new people. And these, this people, the first where I was at for 10 years, they were uh, Asian. The, the other place in New York, I never saw these people. But when I used to go out, I had a doorman at the time. When I used to go out, I used to come back and see like random people standing around the door and where they we had the packages. So it could have been one of those people, but I don't know. Then the lady, I saw her before, she was Jamaican. These people in Florida, they're Caucasian. So don't put a color to gang stalkers. Don't don't put a color to them at all. They're different colors, different status. So yeah, you just need to figure out who's targeting you to put a face to it. But because I moved around, it changed all the time. So um, once they put the mat back, I put up cameras and then I was able to see who was by my door, but the banging continued. Then my lease was up there. I was um, offered to stay there, but I just knew I wasn't going to stay there. Not with all that craziness that was happening there. So I didn't find a place at that time. So I went to a, ho a hotel and then the same thing was happening upstairs. I stayed there a week and then I went to an extended stay. Then I was leaving and then this guy was locked out of his, his room. So he's talking to the front desk. And then this other girl, they just looked like they were home. They were housing people. So there were people that were living there. So then I was just like, what in the world? So this guy, which I believe that was the person that was on, on the top, because I heard the door close that was above me right when I was leaving out. So he came over with $10 to give my daughter. And I was like, no, she's fine. No, thank you. And he looked like he was mad about me refusing the money. That's another way too. They'll try to give you money. Um, curse the money. The gang stuff, it definitely goes hand in hand with witchcraft. It all depends on who you are. They'll try anything. They'll do anything. All this demonic, this is a demonic system. So anything you can think of demonic, they'll do. So now we're going to get into how witchcraft plays a part with gang stalking. Not everyone that's into gang stalking an individual is into witchcraft, but witchcraft does play a part in gang stalking. So this is why you have to be knowledgeable. The Lord said in scripture, it says, my people perish due to lack of knowledge. So because of that, you have to make sure that you're knowledgeable in every area because trust me, they are. If you know what the root of witchcraft is, which is to manipulate and to control, this is exactly what they're trying to gain over you. They're trying to manipulate the situation and control you. They're trying to control the outcome. They want the outcome to be favorable. So this is why they will do witchcraft because nothing can happen physically unless it happens in the spirit first. So this is why 
evildoers, wicked individuals, witches and warlocks, Freemasons, all these people play in the spirit. They're going into the spirit to manipulate the spirit. And if they're not doing it, they know a witch, a warlock to do so. And this is why I'm led to speak about everything that I know, because then you can put measures in place to block this stuff. So even though you know that they're playing in the spirit, you can still block this stuff. This is where the manipulation of the dreams and astral projection comes in. And when it plays out physically, it just seems like it just happened that way, or you fell victim in that way, or you reacted in that that way and caused this. No, this all happened spiritually. They manipulated you spiritually, or they have been sending evil at you daily. And this is why we suit it with the whole armor of God, because it will quench the fiery darts of the enemy. So they're constantly sending evil at you. And if you're not suiting up with the whole armor of God, if you're not pleading the precious blood of the Lord over your mind, body, spirit, and soul, if you're not taking the initiative to pray to the Lord to guide your steps away from trouble and any evil that comes nigh your dwelling, that it will be uprooted and destroyed by the fire from heaven. If you're not praying in that way, they will find a crack. They will come through and then you're going to end up buckling. You you have to cover your bases in all aspect of gang stalking. Trust me, you will be successful if you know that this is a spiritual and physical battle that you're fighting, not just physical, not just spiritual, both. So I don't know if you guys know what psychological warfare is, but I'm going to read that and then I'm going to read spiritual warfare. So it says here, psychological warfare, the use of propaganda against an enemy supported by such military, economic, or political measures as may be required. Such propaganda is generally intended to demoralize the enemy, to break his will, to fight or resist. The twisting of personality and the manipulation of beliefs in prisoners of war by brainwashing and related techniques can also be regarded as a form of psychological warfare. So now I'm going to read spiritual warfare. Spiritual warfare is a Christian's concept of fighting against the work of evil forces. It's based on biblical beliefs in evil spirits or demons that are said to intervene in human affairs in various ways. So psychological warfare, you can see um, this is created by man, you can say. And spiritual warfare is something you can't see but you're still being fought, if that makes sense. Things to look out for regarding witchcraft. They will be planting items at your door. And the reason for that is for you to come in contact with it. Once you come in contact with a cursed item or they'll give you cursed money, you form a evil covenant. If you don't know what a covenant is, we either have a covenant with the Lord or we have a covenant with the enemy. So this is where generational curses come in as well. Once we have, once we're born into our bloodline, having a covenant with the devil, we have to break it. If the Lord has waken you up, you're the curse breaker in your family. The Lord is waking you up because he wants you to break the curse off your life. So this is part of a curse. Being gang stalk is part of a curse. Freemasons are definitely into witchcraft regarding the demonic forces that they call up. They have a pat and an oath with the devil and the rituals that they partake in. And this is why your, your bloodline will be already cursed from birth, but it stems back. This is why you pray all the way, dating all the way back to Adam and Eve, that whatever curse has been on the bloodline of the Lord, you repent for your sins, your ancestors' sin. We will go into warfare regarding these things. So you're able to break free from the curse that's chained. You're chained to this. So it's like, and if they dedicated you, you're chained to a demonic entity. And this is why everywhere you go, it's turmoil because that, in, that entity is part of you. And this is why deliverance is needed. You need to repent and break the evil covenant that you have with that demon. So that demon has no more legal right. And then you continue praying for the Lord to blind the eye of every minor experience. It's not going to happen overnight, but at least you'll have some type of outline on what's going on and what you need to do. So with the banging sometimes and the stomping, the tapping, sometimes that's rituals as well with how many times that they stomp, how many times that they bang, how many times that they tap, how many times that they cough. Coughing is a thing. I think, I, I don't know if I mentioned that, but this is all part of witchcraft. So sometimes these things are, or, or slamming cabinets, this is synchronized with um, a ritual that they have to do for whatever spell they're doing towards you, at you, projected at you to work. I think somebody said something about coughing. That's part of um cursing. Pray the Lord uproot anything. You know, you silence any evil tongue speaking against you, your environment, your household. There's a lot of people that don't see this from a spiritual aspect and this is why they feel hopeless in the way that they do because it just feels that there's no way out and it is through the Lord. They would steal your trash, 
It would go through your trash. You have to pay attention to how you throw away your trash and dispose of your um, personal items in that way. You have to be conscious of that. They will plant items at your door. They will steal the items. You say you have flowers, plants, mats, reefs, whatever the case may be. They will steal it from you. Um, they could curse it and then bring it back. It all depends or just steal it just to um, upset you in that way and then see how you react. So these are things to be aware of. Try not to leave things out. But if you do have these things, definitely once you put up cameras, this will definitely deter them from stealing it. But you have to make sure you have cameras up. So the things that they do pretty much wants you to take your eyes off the Lord. That's first and foremost, because prayer is power. Prayer is your protection and they don't want you to be protected. So this is a whole distraction to keep your eyes off the Lord or to keep you from ever finding the Lord. So if this has been happening from you were a child, you've already been being gang stalked. You just didn't know it until the Lord actually opened your eyes to it. So when you're, when you're more so focused on them, they're feeding off of the energy that you give them. So it's like, where your mind goes, your energy flows. I think you guys heard that before. So they're feeding off of that. In order for these people to feed off of that, it's a demonic entity behind that. I can't feed off of your energy if you're paying attention to me. Definitely not. So these people are actively doing this, feeding off of you because they are, they're demonic. There's an evil force behind them that's fueling them to do this. And this is why you cannot pay them any attention. If you, you know, you cannot focus on them or retaliate. Once you retaliate, it's like what they're doing is working and you can't allow that to happen. You need to continue keeping your eyes on the Lord and he will take care of it. When they're successful, they're winning. When they're successful from distracting you, from taking you off course in any way, shape or form, they are winning. So with any of the tactics that they're trying to do, whether it be spiritually, physically, psychologically, emotionally, mentally, in any of the tactics that they're um, projecting at you, this is a rule of thumb. Always remember John 10, 10, the enemy comes to kill, steal, and destroy, but the Lord has come to give you life and give it to you more abundantly. So there's two forces here, good and evil, right? So with the evil, what are they trying to kill? What are they trying to steal? What are they trying to destroy? So whatever tactic that they're doing to you in that given time, take a step back. If their goal was to get you committed later in the future so they can take whatever it is from you, this is all a set up. Once people figure out gang stalking is not random, then it's easier to wrap their head around this. Just look back. They've already been planting seeds along the way. So it's not going to be far-fetched when you take it overboard one day and then you you end up getting committed and you cannot sign yourself out. The rabbit hole goes deep and your family could have been setting you up since birth. And this is the, and this is the thing, especially if you've been called by the Lord to do a specific thing, they already know that. They already know that. And um, some of these people are not even human. Some of these people have the seed of Satan in them. And this is why I continue to refer to kills to and destroy because they're working out of the spirit of the devil. So this is why they're coming at you as hard as they're coming at you because you have something in you that you don't know yet. And the Lord is trying to reveal this to you from the things that you hear from me and other people that have been going through it or the Lord has revealed to us who we are. We have to, we have to speak our testimony to help you realize who you are and so on and so forth. Once you unplug from this matrix, then you'll see that this whole thing was a setup to set you up, to slip up for them to get you for whatever it is. So trust me, you have wakened up at the right time to come against this stuff. The Lord didn't wake you up beforehand wouldn't have believed it or you would have put it, the information would have put you in harm's way. He's separating you from them so he could reveal more to you, to strengthen you with the information that you're going to need to combat whatever they're doing. But it's a timing. It's timing for everything. Breaking generational curses is first and foremost, because that's going to block certain things from being able to penetrate your life. When we have these open doors and covenants with the, the enemy, it makes it hard for the Lord to block certain things. So you can't serve two masters. You can't be in a covenant with the devil and a covenant with the with the Most High. It doesn't work that way. You have to break in any evil covenants that you've been born into or things that you brought on yourself. You go into prayer, you would repent. Certain de devils which is strongholds will not leave. The Lord said this kind comes out with prayer and fast only when prayer and fasting is involved. So what fasting is going to do is bring your spirit more so in the forefront. The change is going to take shape spiritually, but what's going to happen is you're going to see it play out physically. So pretty much because of the, because it's a spiritual battle, fasting is needed in order for your spirit to, to get stronger in that way. Reading the word, 
The Lord said, man shall not live on bread alone, but every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. So you have to read the word in order to build it. It's like Popeye and spinach, you can say. So the more that you read, the more stronger you are, if that makes sense. I'm going to have a Freemason deliverance prayer in the description as well. So if you feel led, if you know you have Eastern stars of Freemasons in your family, um, listen to that deliverance prayer, but do not listen to it unless you're ready. Because once you break out of these curses, what will happen if you're not ready and you continue sinning? I'm going to read that scripture. Matthew 12, 44 to 45. And then it says, I'll return to the house from which I came. And when it comes, it finds the house empty, swept, and put in order. Then it goes and brings with it seven other spirits more evil than itself. And they enter and dwell there. And the last say of the person is worse than the first. So also will it be with this evil generation. I didn't understand this scripture at first when I started my walk because I was just like, if, if it's swept clean, that means it's clean. There's no filth there. No, but the person wasn't filling themselves with the Holy Spirit. And you're listening to deliverance prayers. Your focus is deliver for the Lord to deliver you from the evil that has you've been born into and the evil that you brought upon yourself. So when you're doing that, if you're not ready and you're falling back into this sin, if you're falling back into whatever it may be, if you're opening back the door, this is when seven more evil wicked than itself so when you do feel that say to fall back into whatever it is it's temptation the lord said resist the devil and he will flee from you so what you would have to do is resist whatever it is because what they're trying to do is come back in the original state of you will be worse if you're not ready to start breaking generational curses and closing the demonic doors that has been open in your life. And in order to be successful regarding the gang stalking and the tactics, you need to break that because if you have open doors to the enemy, they're going to continue coming through that door. So you're going to always have blind spots everywhere you go. It will not be in your favor. And even though there's demonic people everywhere, when you cover yourself and you cover the heart and mind of everyone that you come in contact with that's in a position to help you, you already set your day in motion for the Lord to go before you to cover the people that is in position to help you. Forget everybody else that's want to attack you. The people that's in position to help you is the ones that you need to see you through the lens of the father, not the end, the lens of the enemy. Because what will happen is when the enemy is able to use these demonic people, they're seeing you from the eyes of the devil. So what they, what the things that they do to you, they feel comfortable in doing that because they're seeing you from the lens of the enemy. So they're being fueled by the devil. So if you're covering these people, what will happen is the spirit of the Lord will be on them. So they're going to see you as the, the person that you are. They're not going to see you as the wicked person that the enemy wants them to see you as. So they feel justified by treating you like garbage or, or or putting roadblocks and traps in your way this is all a game once you figure out this is a game you have to learn how to play this game so now we're going to talk about voice to skull and demonic voices so the reason why i'm bringing this up is because one is spiritual one is physical so which one is attacking you is first and foremost do you have voice to skull being projected at you or is it a demonic entity talking to you so there's people that said they heard voices drums gunshots knocks on the door footsteps things of that nature is being projected at them that's what they're saying here and that can also be a demonic force in your environment that's due to a curse following you an entity following you or witchcraft being done to you and it's being projected at you so all this stuff goes hand in hand so the more you know the more you're able to block stop physically and spiritually it can range it's like the demonic forces wanting you to fall into the trap to do something so it could range from overeating over drinking tipping the scale all the way to suicide then you hearing voices for you to kill yourself you're a loser you're worthless the god hates you um you're being punished the demonic force is trying to make you feel hopeless but you have to know this is a demonic force which you can rebuke and you can block now the voice to skull technology now this is something that you can block spiritually so like i said before nothing can happen in the physical unless it happens in the spirit first so if you're just looking at it like a device is being projected at you then and you're not covering yourself you're not suiting yourself up with the whole arm of god you're not pleading the precious blood of the lord over your mind body spirit and soul the helmet of salvation is the part of the armor of God, salvation. So if you're not reading the word, if you're not suiting up, if you're not 
blocking out, rebuking these things, then they're going to definitely win, whether it's by a device or a demonic force that has been sent at you. So you have to know that you need to cover yourself physically and spiritually, and it's doable. You just have to know you need to cover yourself in that way. The things that are bigger than you, the Lord will take care of it. You just have to know you have to play your part, if that makes sense. Also, demonic entities can alter dreams. Um, people say voice to skulls. They come into their dreams. That could be a thing or it's demonic entities trying to alter your dreams because once they alter your dreams, you come into agreement, whatever they want. So this is why I say nothing can happen physically unless it happens spiritually and evildoers know that. And this is why they try to manipulate you spiritually. Astral projection is a thing where they would project themselves into your atmosphere, whether it be physically or spiritually. It's a demonic entity helping a human, whether it be um, a Freemason, a witch, a warlock, they are being assisted by the devil that they conjured up to help them attack you. Electronic harassment, cyber harassment, and other forms of control are designated to leave targets feeling stressed out, disoriented, drowsy, helpless, and paranoid. Targets are left with no one to trust and no one to turn to. This form of harassment uses electronic weapons of various types to remotely torture, control, and physically harm Harm target individuals over time. So it could be a device, but it also could be spiritual. It could be demonic entities. You have to stay into prayer and cover yourself daily and rebuke it, pray against it. Yeah, they want to make it so unbearable for you that you feel that the only way out is suicide, and that's a lie. You would be in you would be going to the lake of fire to be tortured even worse. The only way out is the Lord. Do not believe that lie. The enemy is a liar the father of lies and everyone associated with him is a liar. So the Lord is delight. The Lord is the only way. The Lord will get you through this. You just have to know there is a way out. Continue to plead the precious blood of the Lord over your mind, body, spirit, and soul. Follow the steps that I have in the guide and everything else will fall into place. So I went to an extended stay and guess what? Same thing happened. I was on the top though. So this happened like banging like 3 a.m. I had to call the front desk. They came up and then they're like, oh yeah, they were sleeping. They were not sleeping. You know what I mean? I've, I was sleeping. So um, it was like, it was an older woman and a guy there. I think they were Spanish or whatever the case may be. And then I went on my fast. I prayed. Um, the Lord was just revealing how spiritual this was. So it was a, definitely a demonic entity inhabiting these people wherever I was going. So then after that, I found a place. So I came to, I was in Orlando, came to Tallahassee and where I was at, no one was above me because that, that they were still renovating up there and no one was at the side of me. And then someone moved in there, someone moved in up there and same thing happened. So that place now, I mean, these people were demonic, demonic, like on another level, demonic. I had my security system set up there. So I had a security system set up there. I had my ring camera set up there as well. I caught some things on camera, which I tried to um, include in this video, but then it's erased and it actually broke. That's another tip. When you do have cameras and you download it, also screen record whatever it is because for some reason it erased maybe because the camera was broken and it was on the cloud or whatever the case may be but it erased from my phone I, I no longer have it so i wasn't able to i'm not able to show you guys certain things from that place so definitely screen record any downloads that might be helpful for you to do your research or for you to build your case screen record that as well so anyway that place was on another level so then um the same thing happened. It was just really demonic. Demonic. I, I can't even say, like you could tell, like these people were like possessed, you could say. Like it was just nothing else to figure out. It was just, it was just, in, it was insane. So um, now I'm here at this place. Again, no one was here and no one was up there. And then this person is, you could say fine. The person over there, sort of, because things started to change. The Lord will definitely move you to places where you won't be connected to people, but this is something to be aware of regarding being connected to people. Um, some people will definitely, um, if they're demonic, if they're wicked, then they're gonna just do this, but it's not part of gang stock and it could just be, they're just wicked, if that makes sense. So this person now, one individual. So because that individual leaves, now that individual has people 
come to stay to then do things because they're not there. So this person doesn't know me. I never had a conversation. I never talked to him, never nothing. But this is another thing. If they're not there, they'll enlist people to come where they are to then continue on and to watch you and to stalk you. So you have to be aware of that too. Sometimes people will like enlist people to come where you live, to stay in their home, just to do what they do when they're not there. But you wouldn't know that if you're not paying attention. So um, that's something to definitely be aware of. So it all goes hand in hand with the demonic entity in a person, regarding a person. But you're the highlight of this thing. But why are they targeting you? And this is why you have to stay on your P's and Q's. Because if you're not, um, if you're doing things and you're being erratic, they're going to label you as crazy. Next thing you know, you're in the crazy house. If you're giving them reasons, you, you know what I'm saying? You have to... Follow the steps of the Lord. Sometimes your children have to be pulled out of school because these people are demonic. If you're a target, your child is automatically a target or your child might be the target. So you have to really um, grasp the idea of what they're trying to do. Sometimes people are being targeted because they're after your child. So you have to understand if the Lord is telling you to pull your child from school, that means they're targeting your child there. And then you need to get your child out of there. So you have to really be aware of this stuff because it's not a game at all. So when I was on the live on my other channel, I was talking about a girl coming to my door, um, talking about insurance. Somebody else came to talk about insurance, right? And I said, oh no, somebody already came. So then she had her lanyard, but it was turned around. The same thing I said, the person didn't have their lanyard. Oh, I didn't see a picture. All of a sudden, that's a highlight to me. So because I was talking about her lanyard, the girl touched her lanyard to show me she had a face there and a company there not like you're going to be able to now come and then all of a sudden oh, okay you got doesn't matter there's people with fake badges because you say you are who you are i'm gonna believe you no so she came with her lanyard showed me and i didn't even see a guy was right behind her i'm gonna show you guys i didn't even see him until they went next door You have to really be on top of this stuff. Anybody could rush your door and come in. Stop opening your door for random people. If you're not expecting company, don't open your door. You could talk to them through your camera or talk to them through the window. Don't open your door for people you don't know. Sometimes they're coming to your door to see how many times you answer the door. So you have to be aware of this stuff. Sometimes they're coming or they're sending other individuals to see who answers the door to see who all lives at the house. Sometimes they're by your window to see who all, if they hear other people. The first guy that was at the, um, where I was living before for 10 years, I remember him telling the cop like, oh, it was, I had, um, I was listening, I think to Minister Kevin at the time, but he had said something like, oh, I heard a guy there. So it was like, they're listening to see who's all in your house. So you, this is another thing you have to be aware of when you're talking out loud, when you're on the phone or just talking. This is why people will show up where you're going the next day because you said something out loud to whether you scheduled something on the phone with a friend, randomly talking about whatever, then they know where you're going. That's where they know where to show up. Sometimes it's not that them hacking anything. Sometimes it's from your lips. You just have to be aware of who's coming around your home, who's by your window, things of that nature. They're lurking, they're watching, they're stalking you, but you have to get cameras so then you can see this stuff. Then you could put a face to this, if that makes sense. Then you can actually study their moves. Where my camera is, it's like by my first window here. And it's like another window and then my door. So he's closer to my front door, right? than where my camera is. So he's closer than you think. People say cameras don't work. Cameras work. Cameras work. Without cameras, you are blind. So let me give some backstory on this guy right here. So this is a guy that's always walking back and forth around my house. I don't know exactly where he lives, but anytime I close my window, open my window, he appears somehow. This is another individual that I don't know. So what they will do is communicate with people they've seen you communicate with before or people that live next door to you, upstairs from you, connected to you somehow. That'll give them an excuse to come around your area without looking suspicious. And this is why you have to keep your eyes peeled at all times. 
Like you see him there posted up, standing up. My window was open on that day. So I have to be aware of this stuff. So I'm not calling my daughter's name. So I'm not randomly just chatting. You have to make sure no one's around where you are and be oblivious to this stuff because they want to air hustle to see what they can pick up regarding you or just trying to act like a good samaritan like say you have a package out front they'll knock on your door but hey you have a package like get away from my door so this is what they this other guy used to do at the other place i was at always knocking on my door telling me i got packages like just leave the package i'll get it when i get it <laughs> you know what i mean so they'll do things like that try to just be so overly kind to you this is what you have to be aware of. Just be aware of people that are, and then definitely keep your eyes on people that um, want to communicate with people that you've communicated with. Because now that person, now you have to put a question mark over that person. Because now, if they've seen you communicate with a certain neighbor or coworker or whatever, now what they will do is try to form some type of bond with that person to A, get closer to you so, it, so you guys will cross each other's path because of the connection with that person and or try to get information out of that person so this is why you have to keep your circle real tight-knit especially if you know you're being gang stalked because that person could become a culprit at any given time what i believe because at first i wasn't really 100 percent sure if a white girl that moved in right next door to me was involved but i do not believe that she is and this is why they keep going over to her she does her own thing she does have a dog so the good thing about her dog is her dog will bark if there's someone close to my home so i really do like that but now that i'm putting everything together i do not believe she's into it i believe they would like her to be into it when i was at the old place this is when i had the encounter with the pit bull all of a sudden they're going there the next door that was doing the tapping when upstairs was doing the banging I mean the stomping and then the other neighbor was doing the banging so it was like a, a sequence here it was disgusting when that was happening they passed my window was like is that a pit bull is that a pit bull so it's like yes they are listening so it's either the air to the wall or like people say there's things in the wall but when you move around obviously they're not in the wall but um I'm not going to say it's not, it doesn't happen, but then now you need to get the gadget to then scan your walls. You know what I mean? Anyway, um, they have the air to the wall listening or they're right outside your, your window, but you can't see them. So they're out of the peripheral of your camera. And then there's some people that don't even have cameras. So they're out of the peripheral that you can't see them, but they're listening to everything that you're saying. Learn as you go. If you're paying attention, you'll definitely learn And people are coming out when you're coming out. Sometimes they're interested in you. Sometimes they're just watching you. Sometimes they're trying to mess with you um, mentally. It's our part of the plan. Isolation is a big factor. They don't understand because it's not happening to them or is because the way they do things, it's hard to pinpoint if you are really being targeted, if that makes sense. That's why you have to put all the information you gather together and you have to focus on what's happening with you, not what happened years ago or to someone else. What's happening with you? So this right here is them shining a light at my window. So this is where my living room is positioned. So my camera's on the windowsill and it's picking up the, the light being shined. They want to annoy me and this is why they're doing it. But I'm really not annoyed unless I look at my camera and see this happening. I was making some candles and I was so irritated. I just, I saw this, I looked out my blinds and it's like a girl that I see and I believe that was the girl that the upstairs neighbors was talking about talking to and this is what I'm saying they will recruit people they don't even know what they're doing this for so so you guys are right about that Julie really, I see them doing it but I don't sit there and watch right but I was glad to sit there and watch they turned off the light and sat there I think for like 15 minutes and then it was two people yet again. I didn't even notice that though. So only one person because I never, I just saw it and just kept on doing whatever I was doing because I don't like to focus too much on this stuff. This is what they want. So I was like, is it two people? Because I saw a light, but then I wasn't sure. So the person gets out and like speeds. I slowed it down 
but it was like seconds and this person is wearing all black. It's pitch black out there. I saw something white, but I didn't put two and two together until the following day when they did it again and I went outside. At first I opened the blinds. When I looked out, it was like she was straight looking at my window and that kind of freaked me out, right? And then I'm like, well, what is going on? The other person is like turning their head, but I didn't say anything to them. I went out and walked behind them to see if they can see anything. This is before I put the blackout curtain in the middle, but I wanted to see what they could see. And because they couldn't see anything, I said, okay, whatever. And I went in my house. So this is what, how you have, you have to know how to play this. Don't approach these people. Don't approach these people. See if they can see anything. If they can, then you put measures in place to block that. If they if they can't, then don't say anything because they're just doing it for nothing. You know what I mean? So you have to know because then if, say I was to say something, what would I say? She, she would have just been like, oh, it's shining and just had this conversation, this oblivious um, mindset about it. Like they just innocent. They don't know what's going on. It's all a ploy. It's all a game. So this is what she would have just reported back. So then um, that same night and the next day upstairs was going ballistic, you can say. And so it just confirms that he put this person up to it. Uh, just to be an annoyance to me, but this is why you just put measures in place. So you have to watch what they're doing specifically to you. So then you're able to cover your bases. So you're able to still have peace when they're trying to um, create chaos around you. This is the car that shines the light. This is confirmation <laughs> that I've already confirmed. This is the car. So this is what you can, you guys see. This is my window right here. So this is why I can see that this pointing right at the camera here. Camera's right there. Now I have this this curtain here. This is a blackout curtain. I wasn't using this before. It's gorgeous. I had this in New York. I think I mentioned that. But anyway, decided to put this up because this curtain here is a good curtain. Let me close the blinds here. Let me show you guys here. Might as well demonstrate. <laughs> with this, you really can't see anything, right? But then with this, <laughs> you can't see a thing, honey. So the only thing that's picking up that light that they're shining is my little camera here. So they're doing all that for nothing, but they're just whatever. Um, I'm you, whatever. So I'm glad to show you guys what these people do. And you see how strategic it is. What time is it now? I just placed an order for deliver for groceries. It's not even 10 a.m. yet. So now, tonight, you're going to see the nonsense. So I just went outside to empty the trash. And this person that lives above me, you all know this fan here. That burgundy car is it the white girl that lives right next door to me. He's usually in this spot with his blue cars that shines the light and here he is today and right when he was pulling in right he was going up the steps I was coming out to throw in my other my desk chair and he kind of he's quiet now because I and I checked the mailbox so he's quiet right now but you can hear him right above and I recorded earlier it wasn't 10 yet so yeah my groceries came i went outside checked the mailbox threw out the trash and now he's here you hear that you hear that tapping that's upstairs that's this van right here <laughs> you can't make this up how this is all so yeah this is why a lot of people feel like there's no hope there's hope if you focus on yourself if you if you focus on your environment what they're doing to you how they're targeting you, that's how you'll be able to get ahead of that, if that makes sense. If you're focusing on other people and how they targeted other people, then you're focusing on somebody else's life. You have to move forward with your life because they're trying to stop you and block you for something, you know? So you have to maneuver around this by focusing. Yes, you grab information um, because that's how you get solutions as well with you going through it and learning things on your own, but you have to focus on what is going on with you I, I know i do have a, a purpose right but then what else sometimes it's a kidnap is to rape 
it's to sex traffic it's to child abduct it all depends on what's going on in your home life and things of that nature because they'll definitely um give you give you some type of clues on what they want from you if you're paying attention that's why i created the guy I wanted to create something that i wish i had i wish i had this guide and this is why i wanted to create this for individuals going through gang stalking that feels stuck, that feels lost because it's not a good feeling to feel this because the more hopeless you feel, it's like you don't have anything to live for, but you have plenty to live for and that's why we're here. All the tips that I'm gonna put in here is the tips that you'll need to get through whatever situation that you're going through because that's the whole goal. You need to stop these people in their tracks. You have to be able to maneuver the situation without them knowing your next move, if that makes sense. But you have to do it's not you can't sit still and do nothing you have to put these things in place the link will be below and i'm also going to attach so then we could communicate with each other to help one another get through whatever they're going through so our job as a targeted individual you can say because we're actually not a targeted individual people are targeting us but we're overcomers if that makes sense so i really don't like calling myself a targeted individual because it's like we've given in to being a target but i have no other words to put to it knowing that people are uh, targeting because that's the goal to overcome overcome by the blood of the lamb and the word of our testimony and i wanted and, and i was led to talk about it in this type of way just to give a person some type of hope i opened up my candle business i continued on with life they want to stop you. They want to isolate you. They want to destroy you. They want to make you nothing. So you feel like you don't have anything to live for, but you have plenty to live for. This is why we, we, we are to tell our testimony. So then we can help other others overcome as well. So when others are able to see certain uh, individuals overcome, then they know they have hope to overcome. And because it's happening on so many levels, we need to take the bull by his horn and defeat this. And we can do that through the Lord. Without the Lord, you cannot. It will, it is, is impossible because of the tactics that they do without the Lord is impossible. I just wanted to share my testimony through the home life situation, but I'm also going to make another video regarding the job as well. A job, family, it's going to be separate. So then whoever's going through a certain situation in a certain um, area in their life, they can look at it if it's pinpointing something that they're going through. I wanted to just touch base on when people say that target individuals have a hard time at the workplace, which is true. I'm going to do a separate video about the workplace because there's some things that um, I totally forgot about. And this video pretty much reminded me about it. So what I forgot about was when and when I was in New York, I was working in the HR department and my supervisor had asked me about seeing someone like um, seeing a shrink right one time and I totally forgot about that but it was around the time where I was really tired so she asked me would I want to see someone and I would like see someone for what <laughs> I was um she was like oh because you seem like you're not here I was like um that's because I'm tired so um I really didn't know what was going on at the time like I knew it was something demonic going on and the way they were huddling up and following me and tracking me and stalking me at these jobs, I knew it was something going on. And then when I started walking my walk, the world revealed how spiritual it was regarding everything that was being revealed. But um, yeah, so definitely once you see someone, like if they are advising you to see a shrink, whether it be a family uh, within your family is requesting this, a job requesting is friend requesting it. This is to get it documented that you needed to seek some type of further assistance. So if they're trying to set you up in that way to be committed in the future, this is what they need. They need a paper trail. So definitely be aware of if someone is um, trying to suggest to you to see a psych psychiatrist, psychologist. So definitely be aware of this stuff because this is not by chance. It's definitely... Um, is going to work again to you in the future so they're definitely switching up the tactics now in this environment um uh, because what they were doing before was definitely not working the more you fast the more you pray the more you assess these situations and not react in a physical manner then you'll be able to get ahead of it the guy that you saw in the bushes it's it's two of them one that the one that you saw in the bushes and the second one now um this is the one that threw the water outside so a lot of crossing.
a lot of wheezing, coughing in any room that I enter. He's doing that now. They weren't doing that before. But I did hear about some people speaking about that being a tactic with the coughing, the sniffling, um, you know, that disgusting hacking and things of that nature. But that's when I enter. Um, so that's a, that's new because that, that was never happening before. And um, now it's like the, the cars now. The cars, every time it passes my bedroom window, they'll start revving up their engines. And, and it's around the time that I'm supposed to be going to sleep with between 11 and 2 a.m. they're doing that um during the day they were doing that but then it's like calm down during the day and now they're doing it around the time i'm supposed to be going to sleep like someone is watching when i turn off my light but i'm definitely closing the blinds before they know that but yeah so they're doing that that's a situation in itself that was never happening before but when i was at the other place it was someone that used to just rev up their engine all the time a lot of car honking um alarms going off things of that nature and the place before that was stealing things and this is why reacting carnal too to just make things harder for you like if now if you have a felony you can't do certain things you know what i mean or to just get you incarcerated and then it could trickle down to your children if your children is a thing so if they want to take your children they'll make situations happen where now there's uh paperwork on you and your child and then it, it just makes it easier for them if they wanted to if your child is the target so you have to be very aware and, and um aware of what these people are trying to do so everyone's situation is different but you you have to assess your situation because that's how you'll get ahead of it and that's when you'll be able to block it and then you'll know what they're trying to do so then you do something you do the total opposite on what they want you to do so yeah i just wanted to say don't get down on yourself if you're having a hard time regarding um employment because the board could be it, revealing to you that he wants you to work for yourself because you're definitely going to have a hard time especially if you're a chosen person you can say the Lord chose you for something or you're a target individual you're going to have a problem with these demonic entities working at these these jobs doesn't matter uh what type of job you have they're all they're everywhere so um the Lord said the wheat and tears grow together the wheat and tears work together too so you have to start putting things in place for yourself because once they start locking people out the system, what will you do? They said buy or sell if we, uh, unless we take the mark. But once you follow the Lord, the Lord is going to sustain you. But you have to be following his lead. You have to put him in the center. Because then whatever they try to block us out of, the Lord will have a, um, a way out of every situation. The witch that was living next door to me at the other location, what um, came to me was when she brought me food. So this is why you have to be aware of, the, this is why you guys have to be aware of who you eat from. Um, people don't want to believe gang stalking, uh, witchcraft has anything to do with gang stalking. They have hand in hand, especially if a witch is gang stalking you. She's going to do witchcraft. She's going to project evil at you. So you will buckle to what she's trying to do. So if they want you to react, uh, irate, what, what spirits do you think they're going to send at you? What, what, what do you think they're conjuring up to send at you? It's not for you to be at peace. It's for you to be in, for you to be in, um, not thinking clearly in disarray really to the point where you're going to react they're going to catch you reacting in this way so you're going to be definitely ensnared if you're not careful be mindful of who you eat from you, the places that you work this is why you have to cover yourself suit yourself with the whole armor of god you have to pray you have to fast you have to allow the lord to guide your step you have to pray over your environment once you enter these places you know what I mean? You have to silence these evil spirits, speak it to your spirit and everyone around you. You have to pray over your environment, pray over the people um, so they're not influenced and affected by these demonic forces that's being conjured up and, and, and in this vicinity. Because some people are just open vessels and some people don't, and some people are actually actively working against you. So it, 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 it's two groups of people here. Some people that is oblivious to what's going on, that's still asleep, and then there's people that's actively pursuing you stalking you hunting you because these some of these people are not even human these people are hunting you to trap you and then whatever they want to do they'll be successful in that so yeah definitely be aware of this stuff i'm definitely going to separate everything so um this is something that this is new as well too so um the lord brought me this idea to make a community to so this is what i've been working on as well so what i did originally was create an email address thinking that we were going to email each other 
um, with the people that got the guide that I created as well. But no, now there's a community for us. Um, you can set up a profile. You can set up a profile. You can create your own groups. You can go live. It's just like if we're on YouTube or any other site, we have our own community. We have our own community. I'm already there. The link is below. Set up your profile. There's some groups I already made. Let me know if there's any other groups that you want to make, if you want me to make, or you can make it yourself and then you invite us. Invite people, everyone that's going through gang stalking or, you know, relate to being, you know, chosen by the Lord that is identified as a target individual. Not the people that say they're target individuals that are doing witchcraft and tarot cards. Don't invite them. Invite everyone else. Um, so then now we have our own space. Um, I already put up something that um, there was a lady with binoculars like <laughs> looking out and once I was like I'm on the computer creating this stuff and I was like this is what I'm going through right now it was just so insane so I had put up a I put up a, a little video about that it was just like one of those gifs or gifs whatever you call that I put one of those up <laughs> and then um, and then over here was like coughing <laughs> And I just like wrote it in there. I'm like, wait till everybody sees this. It's just going to be epic because it's like we go through this, but then we go through this alone. So we have a space dedicated to this and the people that's going to be involved is going to um, know exactly what we're going through. So we can communicate with each other. We can have some laughs, shed some light, you know, so it's going to be awesome. This, this was definitely not for me. I'm taking my shower one day I was working on. Was it? Yeah, I was working on the guide. I had just finished working, in, not finished totally, but I was finishing up on the task that I had for the guide and taking my shower. And then this popped in my head that it definitely was not, a, it was definitely not for me. So then I'm looking up how do I create this? A targeted community, people that have dealt with narcissistic abuse and gang stalking. So within gang stalking, you deal with narcissists and if we could have dealt with narcissists in our family. So it's definitely going to be a good, it's going to be good for us that have been through so much. Um, we could lean on each other, we could we could help each other, and we could have laughs. Because this is just, to me, the, the Lord is so amazing with the, with, uh, the ideas that he gives us. Because I would have never thought about this. And I haven't, I've never seen anyone, uh, I have never seen a space dedicated, not an app where it's like our profile picture is there we create groups we can go live so i've never seen that so i just think that's amazing that we're going to be able to see each other help each other laugh with each other and it's just so many other things that we're going to be able to do and shed light on to help everybody else that's coming up in this that don't know what to do or the days that it becomes overwhelming then we have a space that we can go in and start chatting with one another you know it'll help it'll make it easier trust me because this is something that was that have been amazing when i was starting but we all go through this differently the lord will have certain one of us certain of us go through certain things and then he'll give us ideas and then help the other others come up. one other thing like when you guys if you have uh in your home life if they've been making noise and then they stop what they're doing is trying to uh especially if you've done something differently whether it's fasting and praying protecting yourself releasing yourself from certain things because if they're into witchcraft you have some type of they have some type of um connection to you in the spirit and um fasting and praying will break these evil demonic connections because you don't know if you're living next door to these people and they already cursed your ground or place something there now you have a covenant with them so if they're in the spirit then they can see things they can do things project things at you easier and um when you fast and pray you break it so or, or you cancel whatever spells that they've done over you and your environment your household your children whatever your mind so when that happens what they're trying to do is assess you assess the situation again they're trying to um gauge what's going on with you now they get quiet because you've done something this is all spiritual and uh, by this time you guys should know that so what they're trying to do is because whatever attack that they sent they failed so they get quiet because now they're trying to regroup that's when you start to now you assess the situation and then uh move differently switch up your habits your routine 
inside and outside your home. If you usually take a shower around 8, take it around 11, or take it around 7, you know, switch up stuff when you start setting your alarm. You set it at 9, you set it at 6, or you set it at 11. You start switching up these things. Don't let these people gauge your idea on what you're doing or what you're not doing and when you're doing it because then they'll have this profile on you and then God knows what they're going to try to do with this information that they obtain because they're not quiet for nothing. They're quiet because they're trying to understand your ins and outs. So um, you have to be aware of your habits and then switch it up. Once it pops in your head like, wait a minute, let me switch this up. I haven't switched this up in a while. That's the war just alerting you that um, you're becoming too um, predictable. You have to be unpredictable. Um, is there anything else I wanted to say? Um, and then um, with the emails, um, even though I might do a separate video, but it's not really much to touch base on regarding the cyber stalking, but definitely your emails, them sending you fake bills for you to click on it, sending you fake emails that someone tried to get into your account, but you'll probably get that too, that someone tried to get into your account and um, they're trying to get into your account. <laughs> Um, but setting up two-step verification and then the steps in the guide as well. Once you hit that reset button, there's some things that's really going to shake this whole situation up. I'm just not going to share that with everybody. I don't feel comfortable because this is things that I do. And then there's a, there's something in there that is kind of illegal, but if it's, if it's our own devices, we can do it. But you, if you get the guide, you'll know what I'm talking about because it's something that we have to build. So if you get that, then you'll be able to stop something. But anyway, if you get the guide, it can definitely be beneficial. So yeah, I'm not sharing that with everybody. It's for the people that get the guide. And um, that's pretty much it. Uh, I was going to say something. Yeah, so when they're sending you fake bills, it's to definitely it's pro probably a hyperlink in there somewhere for you to click on to try to gain access to your devices. Don't click on these things. Then it's straight to the trash. Because you won't recognize their bill anyway, but you never know. You might, it might seem recognizable, but just take your time, look at it. Don't click on it. Don't, don't make any, just assess this thing and then make sure that this is of your company or then you double check, call, whatever they're trying to do. If it's your bank or whatever, don't click on it, verify it with them and don't change any password until you verify. Because once you get a link saying that, change this password to get into access to this that could just be all a ploy for them to gain access to your new password then they're going to lock you out and then they're going to hack your information so definitely be aware of this stuff because when you're being gang stalked it depends they'll try anything if this stuff ain't working they're going to try this this is why they're switching up their tactics here because things are not working but it's not working because i'm staying in the presence of the lord uh -huh. now if i was in the carnal these things would be having a, taking a toll on me. Um, yeah, so you're human. So there's, you're going to have some down days, but you're going to have more up days than down if you stay connected to the Lord in every aspect because that's where we get our strength from. Because um, this thing definitely can take a toll on you after a while. Definitely uh, pray over yourself on a daily basis. Suit up with the whole armor of God and plead the precious blood of the Lord over your mind, body, spirit, and soul. And cover the people that you come in contact with, people in authority, cover their minds that the Lord would silence any evil spirit speaking to their spirit, that they would not um, see you through the lens of the enemy, that they'll see you through the lens of the Lord. You know, you cover them because that's definitely a tactic, especially if witchcraft is in your family, if people are actively doing this or demonic forces are following you because you have to break these evil demonic connections that you have from generational curses or things that people have done to you that you're not aware of once you start breaking this stuff then uh you will block that entity that's following you from place to place and causing problems and blocking opportunities for you witchcraft definitely has its hand in gang stalking and once people understand that this is a spiritual battle they'll start fighting spiritually more often because it's only but so much we can do in the physical but if you cover the spirit and cover the physical, then there, you, then, then you're definitely going to not only get ahead of it, you'll win. You know, so just be aware of that. So this is pretty much it. I just wanted to speak about like the last couple of things that uh, has started and then also to let you guys know that, um, let you guys know about the targeted community, the targeted community that is in the description because that's you and... 
what else and then the guide so that's pretty much it um I just wanted to get on um, don't be down on yourself if you lose a job if you have to remove yourself from a job I've been there I am there and um, the Lord might want you to focus on your talents your gifts so then you have then you'll be your own boss if that makes sense you'll be your own boss and your income will be flowing in um, from your doing from his doing let the Lord do his job so let the Lord work in your life you're being removed a because you're being blocked by demonic entities or b the lord is removing you so then you will work for yourself so i just want to shed light on that so click the links below the guide is below and the targeted community is below i can't wait to see you guys in there and um, i hope this video was helpful until next time we'll talk soon bye when it happens more often than not then you know that this is all is all a game it's, it's all a game. People that are being gang stalked definitely know they're being gang stalked. There is no confusion about that. Why so many people don't believe it is because they're under a spell. They're still in the matrix. You're not in the matrix. You're unplugged from this demonic system. And this is why it's happening to you.